Just days after John Baylor proclaimed himself military governor of Arizona, 300 miles to the west, some 200 Chiricahua Apache warriors laid siege to the Presidio at Tubac. The defenders were the civilians who lived in the village inside the old fort's walls, including a few local militiamen, and they were badly outnumbered by the attacking force. It's a wonder they even held out as long as they did. The defenders were surrounded for four days. That was four days of on and off gunfire and fighting off attempts to storm different parts of the Presidio walls. By a stroke of luck, the settlers managed to get one messenger to escape through enemy lines who made it to Tucson. On the fourth and final day of the siege, 25 Arizona militiamen led by Captain Granville Ory rode into the village with guns blazing to bust out the villagers. They even had a standard bearer waving the stars and bars from his horse as the troop made a dramatic entrance. Even with the reinforcements, the defenders were outnumbered and couldn't hope to make the Apache retreat, but they broke the siege and successfully evacuated the inhabitants of the village. The refugees and militiamen rode off like lightning to Tucson, leaving Tubac to be burned by the Chiricahua. Some of the survivors from the Siege of Tubac left Tucson two weeks later bound for Texas and were attacked again, this time by 100 Mimbreno Apache, who killed four settlers in the fighting, wounded several more, and stole 400 cattle and 900 sheep, which was an absurd amount of wealth in the desert frontier. A few days later, Captain Thomas Maston of the Arizona Guards Company led 35 militiamen on a surprise attack in the Florida mountains to take back the 1,300 head of livestock. They left behind seven dead Apaches, and the militia took no casualties in this engagement. Tucson's local paper, The Weekly Arizonan, reported on August 10th, The mail is withdrawn, the soldiers are gone, and their garrisons burned to the ground, the miners murdered, and the mines abandoned. The stock raisers and farmers have abandoned their crops and herds to the Indian, and the population generally have fled, panic-struck and naked, in search of refuge. We think no man ever before sought desolation so widespread. From end to end of the territory, except alone in Tucson and its immediate vicinity, there is not a human habitation. In this extremity, our only reliance is in God and ourselves. Pray, boys, but keep your powder dry. The following month, the unified Apache Nation took the offensive farther north and east. On September 2nd, a four-man squad of Confederate cavalry soldiers from Fort Stanton were on a scouting mission through the Guyanas Mountains when they were ambushed by 30 Muscalero Apache warriors. Three of the rebel soldiers died in the two-hour firefight, and the lone survivor, wounded and running low on ammo, escaped on horseback and braved an almost vertical downhill slope to get away from his pursuers. 